I decided to become a priest because I was deeply convinced that God is calling me to be a priest. And I think I came to that awareness because of the great example of many fine priests in my life. Well, when I was growing up in my home parish in Guelph, Ontario, I was very impressed by the wonderful priests in my parish, both old and young, pastors, associates. They were filled with a great joy. They gave their lives completely to the service of other people. And I sensed in them a deep peace. It wasn't so much what they said, it was the example of their lives that really touched my heart. The connection to family is very important for all seminarians and for all priests. I remember my, my bishop, Bishop Reddy, when I was newly ordained, saying, be sure you spend time with your family. They're very precious in your life, and I, he was right. God will provide the priests, and the only thing Jesus ever said was pray to the Lord of the harvest to send labors into the harvest. So I think the most important thing for all of us to do is to pray to the Lord, and I strongly recommend spending time in adoration before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. The more this is done in dioceses and parishes and throughout the world, the more priests there are, not by some magical uh, combination there, but it's just obvious. It's what the Lord asked us to do. But I think also one other thing the Lord did is he called people, he invited. And so he called by name. And I think one thing we need to do is to invite people to, uh, to become priests. The source of vocations in very many ways is in the family. It's not anywhere else than that because our whole life comes from the family. And so I would very much encourage parents and all members of the family to pray for vocations to the priesthood. And if it may be by God's grace that one of the members of the family is being called to do that, uh, to encourage that. The most important thing in life is to become a saint and we all are frail and weak. And so to be a priest, what is required is to be a person who seeks to become a saint. But that's required of all of us. And God will give us his love and mercy and his guidance and his strength for each one of us, whatever our vocation may be, to become a saint. I grew up in a fairly typical family. I grew up in a small community in western Newfoundland called Pasadena. We had about an average religious practice. We've traditionally been a very poor people and so we've had a strong focus on taking care of each other because we didn't have outside services in terms of government assistance. So traditionally it was the religions, especially for us and for my family, the Catholic Church, which was very, very instrumental in providing education. So Newfoundlanders have a focus on what you would call community, but it played in a special way in terms of the religious role and the religious sphere, integrating that and making it possible. When I was traveling through Newfoundland once and I was still discerning, I happened to stop in the community I was born in and this giant of a man got out of a car and said, who are you? And it was old Father Grace that my father was his first altar boy back in 58. He did so much good for these communities and helped so, so many people. This man is the type of man that inspires service to the altar and to the people of God. A teacher has a particular capability to raise up a vocation, to water it like a plant, so to speak they can see the signs if they themselves live their own faith and make it possible to bring forward those gifts that every person has. And in looking at the students, they should be able to see what capacities they have to foster them, but they can really only do that if they're living the faith themselves. The family should foster the vocation in the home. The school should provide the education and the finer points, and the church itself should serve the school and the home spiritually at every turning point and provide for every major occasion of life and death. The most significant thing that prepared me to be a missionary was my time and years as an educator, as a teacher in the classroom, where you actually become a jack of all trades and a master of none and this just flows into adapting very well in the missions. What led me to say yes to the opportunity to be a missionary was, I, I think it was something that had been part latent uh, dreaming inside of me to work with Aboriginal people. And the other one that said yes was, um, part of it was adventure and curiosity and um, a desire to um, to learn something new 
and to be present with the people in whatever way and to use my skills also as, um, as a teacher, as a professional. Uh, as a mentor, uh, the priest who was there at the, at the missions that I was in, he had been in those missions for 50 years. And um, he, would, he was very supportive and very uh, encouraging and he would challenge me to do, to try out to do different things and to attend different activities. What was inspirational as these, these mentors to me was um, I would say their, their devotion to the people, their respect and love for the people and their wanting for the people to be the best people that they could be. Considering a vocation is, is not something that happens uh, at a, it, it just kind of grows with a, a person at a, a certain times of their lives. It could be in their youth, could be in their adulthood, could be even in their later years. But it has something to do with uh, wanting to be generous because God calls lots of people. There are many that are called and then it's the response. How will you be, how will a person respond to that wanting to serve? The work with the people brings me that fulfilling life of my vocation as a sister of the holy names of Jesus and Mary. My decision to become a priest uh, was a part of a long journey that I was taking. It was something that was growing from the time I was a child, from my family to uh, the many influences in my life throughout, uh, throughout the younger part of my life. And uh, I eventually made a choice to commit myself to God. The ambition was simply to become a good priest and a pastor, perhaps. Uh, that was it. But it was expected later on that I would be uh, taking some other kind of a journey. So the uh, previous Cardinal, Cardinal Carter, uh, called me in one day and told me he was sending me to the missions. And so he sent me to another diocese and that's how I got involved in missions. I came back to the Archdiocese of Toronto, which is my own. So that's where I, I am now and it's extremely fulfilling to work with other priests and bishops. Being with the missions is a wonderful thing, it has been for me, because you get a glimpse again and again and again of a completely different way of living and living out the vocation of a, a priest. So you're uh, working, especially with First Nations people, but also with people in uh, Labrador and Newfoundland, people uh, in the far north and in the near north, and, uh, people that are out of our minds because they're so far away. Uh, and it, uh, it, it's wonderful that it has uh, developed my whole notion of what it is to minister to people, to see so many different kinds of people uh, who are Catholics and who are striving for the understanding of the Word of God in their lives.